In this video, we are going to be demonstrating the MLA8 series actuator with our gauging control center software. Uh, in this setup, we're using a 10 millimeter stroke actuator. We've selected a uh, one micron resolution encoder for the actuator. The actuator itself has a linear guide rail built right into it. Uh, well guided, an extended nose bushing on the front. It also comes with an IP65 rating. So let's start with the software. I've opened it up. It's automatically connected to the probe. We see the green status here, green light. We'll go to configure here, enter in our password. Uh, currently we're on the operator uh, interface, so it's just password protected to get into the settings and tuning tabs. Okay, remember the password, there we go. Now, as you can see on the right here, we have our setup tab. We also have a tuning tab. In the setup tab, we'll select our actuator, our uh, type of measurement, uh, whether we want it to be in millimeters or microns or inches. Um, and uh, we can set the datum, we can measure here from, from the software or via discrete input to the controller externally. Uh, and then a position close to part, that's so we can set up a position uh, to do a rapid traverse close to the surface prior to taking the measurement. And it saves on cycle time and throughput. Uh, we can use this and optimize it. Uh, we've got places where we're doing part measurement at 80 to 100 parts per minute uh, with these actuators down in the micron level. Uh, in some cases, submicron level, we're able to measure as well. So, and then set the limits here as well. And then over here in the tuning tab, uh, we have the PIDs. Uh, those are just default. We can leave those alone. There's no, no real need to change those. Uh, teach results. We'll go through a, a teach function and it'll display those results here. It's more just for for data for later use if if we was trying to figure out troubleshoot anything. Um, and then over here, the speed, the sensitivity, the soft landing force, the soft land speed, push force after we soft land, uh, dwell time, and then uh, the datum, if we want to do an offset to the datum surface. So we'll go back to the setup screen here. We'll start, get started. We'll select the actuator, uh, measurement type, static. Uh, in the future, we'll have that set up for dynamic as well, so you we can measure a profile of a surface, uh, measure the type of measurement uh, in millimeters. We'll do that today. Um, and with that completed, we can save the program into the controller. As you can see, it's loading in to the controller uh, in the native language, uh, which we don't have to, we don't have to mess with. So the GUI is handling all that. And it's running through a homing routine. It's gone ahead and homed. I'll clear the screen. Now we'll go ahead and set the datum. So we're setting the datum out here and doing a teach function. And we've learned some information that's going over the tuning tab there. And then uh, it's ready to go. So we'll clear the screen again. Um, we can put some information in here. We know roughly how far we wanna go rapid traverse. I'm gonna say uh, five millimeters for that. Uh, limits, I'm going to use a one millimeter gauge block, so I'll use a one point, just for a limit. Uh, today I'll put one point um, one millimeters in there. For the low limit, I'll put 950, uh, sorry, 0 0.950. And that's adjusted our limits over here on the left. Um, Tuning tab, we can leave that alone for now. We can go back and adjust that later after we get going if we want to optimize things. So we can save the program into the controller. And simply with filling in this data on the first screen, you can get started doing your first measurements pretty soon, here, pretty quickly. All right, so it's gone ahead and homed itself. We'll clear the screen. We got our linear home message back. And now we'll take and measure with it. So I'll just go to the, to the datum surface first. So we have our zero, 
there like we expected and we're outside our limits so of course we failed let's measure again so you can see repeatability there uh, it's going to be spot on within a couple of within a couple encoder counts in this case one micron encoder so all right now the gauge block is in place we'll measure on that and there we have it one millimeter gauge block we're measuring at 1.002 we might have something on the gauge block or laying there on the tip or something but for the two microns there. But again, within that plus or minus two encoder counts is traditionally what we would be uh, rate these for. Now you can see the repeatability of it. And it's filling in our graph here. I can also choose to go over here and I want to select some points to look at. I can zoom into those and, and look at those in further detail. As you can see there, it zoomed into it. Um, there are also other options here with the graph. You can go ahead and export the data as a CSV file or as an image. Uh, you can do different things here in this option selection here. Um, tuning tab, like I say, you can adjust the speeds and and uh, just when you do make changes over here, you have to save the program to the controller. So the, the controller knows those changes were made. It stores them to non-volatile memory as well. Uh, the GUI is not necessary for running the operation. You can use this for setup and then disconnect the GUI and, and strictly run off the I.O. on the controller as well. So now we'll measure. We're measuring the gauge block and we're getting our repeatability there. And I'll just go back to the datum surface just for something different. And there we go. So there's just an overview, quick overview on the SMAC gauging control center.